Hi, this is Carol Graham with Praying for Miracles with Carol. And today we're going to talk about something that might be a little different than our regular format. And what prompted me to talk about this subject is the recent videos that I've done on the anointing. Who is anointed? How do we obtain the anointing? What is the anointing? Etc. And there were lots of questions from the audience. And so I have answered those in recent videos. Just go to Praying Miracles with Carol on YouTube and look up anointing and you will see the various videos there. So the reason that I am doing this today, as I said, may be a real shocker for some of you. But if you understand what the anointing is and that we are anointed because of what Christ has done for us, and that's the promise that we have from him, then you will understand why it is extremely important to grasp what I'm going to share today about translations of the Bible. And this, again, may be a real shocker, but it'll also open your eyes. In fact, when I have shared this on different platforms, people are so appreciative that they now understand that the translation that they are reading is not necessarily anointed. Okay, so let's get into it. God cannot anoint a lie. We know that. He cannot. Sometimes people ask me, why isn't there more messages that we are hearing, you know, in different venues uh, anointed? And they, they say they don't, they don't sense that at all. Well, God cannot anoint a lie. And if who you are listening to is not preaching the truth according to the word of God, then it will not and cannot be anointed. God's anointing can only be on truth. So what does this have to do with Bible translations? Now I'm going to give you a list and you might want to stop this, um, the viewing and write these down because they are extremely important to understand if you are reading this particular version, translation of the Word of God. And that is the NIV version. I'm going to list them. If you have more questions about this, or if you would like a printout of this, just contact me at my um, website, which is prayingmiracles.com, and I can send that to you as well. So if you have an NIV Bible, these are some of the things that you need to make note of. Christ is removed 25 times. Lord is removed 350 times. The name Jesus is removed 290 times. The name God is removed 460 times. The Godhead is only in the Bible three times, but in the NIV translation, it does not exist. Devil and demons have been removed 80 times. The word hell has been removed 40 times. Heaven removed 
160 times. When asked why they changed so many words, it had to do with copyright. So the Bible was changed to get the copyright. It gets worse. Word of God is removed eight times. Word of the Lord is removed 24 times. The Lord Jesus Christ is removed 24 times. Now, if you have an NIV Bible, pick it up right now and look up Acts 8, 37. You won't find it. It goes from Acts 8, 36 to Acts 8, 38. And this is common in this translation. Verses are eliminated. It is not. The word of God in Revelation tells us very, very clearly that we are not to change one jot or tittle from the original word of God. And as close as we can get the translation to that. Personally, I use the Strong's Concordance and I look up the original Hebrew and Greek for anything that I am reading or studying in the Word. I'm not talking about just your daily devotion, but in general, if you want to get an understanding of the Word, you need to look at as close to the original text as you can. All right, to continue. Here's a perfect example. In the King James Version, it says, and Philip said, if thou believe with all your heart, thou may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That has been eliminated in the NIV version. Hosea 11.12 in the King James Version says, Judah yet ruleth with God. In the NIV, it says, Judah is unruly against God. Do you see how they changed even the meaning of many, many scriptures found in the word? I mean, I find this absolutely appalling and very disturbing. Luke 9.56 in the King James Version says, for the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. In the NIV version of that same verse, it says, they went to another village. The whole thing, beginning of that verse, was eliminated. Why? Matthew seventeen twenty one, which says, demons go out with prayer and fasting. Matthew eighteen eleven. He came to save the lost. Not there. Mark 9, 44. The worm does not die. That's been eliminated. Mark eleven twenty six. Forgive those who trespass. Gone. Mark 15, 28. Numbered with the transgressors. Gone. Luke 17, 36. And it continues on and on and on. Meaning changed, words changed, verses eliminated, scripture tainted as a result. There are passages in the NIV that delete many phrases, as in Matthew 5.44. And even more so now than ever, which is most disturbing, the newest version of the NIV has now been made gender neutral. You decide what translation you should be reading. There are many good translations out there, but NIV is not one of them. If you have any questions or any comments, please share in the comment section below or contact me at my uh, website or on this channel here. I thank you for listening and I appreciate your comments and I look forward to hearing from you. This is Carol Graham with Praying for Miracles with Carol.